to the News X Sunday Guardian Roundtable. We're taking a look at the Lok Sabha list. The BJP has come out with that, uh, at least 404 of the 543 lists at the time of recording. So we have a pretty clear idea as to where the BJP is, uh, you know, the kind of messaging, the kind of candidates they are putting up. Uh, the Congress is still, of course, lagging behind, but the Congress too is, uh, you know, has come up with a significant number of names. Also, the names that the Congress hasn't come up with are equally interesting. For instance, the candidates for Amethi and Rai Bareli are still to be announced. From the BJP side, we are seeing a lot of the turncoats from the Congress Congress have gone to the BJP. They've been given tickets, uh, which also brings us to the joke. I think it was cracked by Sanjay Jha saying that Congress Nehru is now Congress Modi. He's also given a lot of tickets to chief ministers, a lot of sitting union ministers who came from the Rajya Sabha being asked to contest. And a lot of loud mouths and people who created controversies have been kept out. What is the big ticket messaging from this? Is he trying to now focus on development and doesn't want controversies coming up in this next term? Uh, if so, then why are people like uh, Tejasvi Surya and Anurag Thakur been given a ticket? These are some of the questions we're going to be discussing in today's show. Joining me on the program is Rashid Kidwai. He is a political commentator, columnist, and an author. I have Sandeep Ghosh, columnist, commentator, and uh, Ashutosh. He's the founding editor of SatyaHindi.com. Uh, Ashutosh, you've been doing a lot of shows analyzing the list. So what are your takeaways really from the BJP's list first? See, I, I do not know that it is fashionable these days to say this, but I, I feel that the BJP is not very confident of... Uh, 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 its victory in 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 2024 because I know there's a lot of propaganda, <laughs> lot of propaganda is going around with the BJP. A uh, lot of propaganda is going around with the BJP is getting 370 seats, 370 seats and the 400 seats, something all that. But the, but the, but if you read uh, between the lines, if you read the the the, the moves uh, uh, by by the BJP, uh, it 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 appears that the BJP is not very confident. And frankly speaking, why? Because look at look look at the few incidents. Like everybody and anybody uh, who is uh, accused of whatever charges is now joining the BJP. Look at the Janardhan Reddy. Janardhan Reddy in 2011 he had a he was arrested in this in nine CBI cases against him. Supreme Court has barred him from entering into the Bellari, uh, Anant, 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 Anantpur and other places nearby districts. And uh, this was the same man about uh, Amit Shah has said I will not uh, he's he's not welcome in the BJP. And today he's uh, he he meets Ar and Amit Shah and he merges his party with the and uh, all kinds of things are happening. Look at the Ashok Chauhan. See Ashok, I can understand that the Ashok Chauhan must be very uh, very uh, nervous and he wanted to join BJP because there are certain cases. See joining BJP is different, but immediately given a ticket for the Rajya Sabha. But uh, this this speaks volume about it. Look at the Sita Sita Soren. And uh, today he he she joins. The next day he gets a ticket to contest election. Is mm. BJP uh, has has a dearth of uh, the talented people who can con who can contest election and win elections? I don't think so. There is, there are many people. So I think that the something is happening. And then the, the, the with with the speed uh, the income tax department is trying to freeze uh, the Congress account. Uh, why are you why are you trying to make Congress invalid to contest elections? Uh, if Congress is so weak, Congress is led by uh, by a leader who can't lead. So these are, these are the signals, these are the signs. And uh, then, what about uh, the elephant in the room? Kejriwal's arrest. Ashutosh, uh, you're not going to contest yeah, that. This this is also this is this is also one of the one of the reasons because uh, so other than other than these these things, he had gone out of his way to accommodate uh, trying to accommodate uh, uh, Naveen Patna. Is going out of his way to accommodate Naveen Patna. Uh, uh, Naveen Jindal. Nitish, Nitish Kumar. Nitish Kumar. See, mm. Nitish Kumar in 2019 and Nitish Kumar in 2024. These are two different entities. He doesn't deserve more than 10, 12 seats. We speak anybody in Bihar, you will get to know. And now he, BJP has given him 16 seats. So this shows that the BJP is somewhere either nervous or not confident about coming back to power. And you, you also has, has, has referred about, about the Naveed Jindal. What is his, his big six as a political leader? What has he done for the Congress or other? He's not somebody that he, if he joins BJP, the whole world will shake and the and the the, the the records of the winning election will 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 get down will get tumbling down. So I think there is there is somewhere something is wrong with the BJP and BJP is not leaving any stone unturned. The uh, the counter argument okay. can be that the BJP is trying to get 370 uh, 363 seat because that is to get uh, two third majority so that they can tinker with the constitution. I'm not buying buying that argument because 263 is out of reach for the BJP. Come what may. 
so uh, bjp is not so confident let's look at that narrative rashid you know he's uh, ashutosh has listed a lot of uh, knee jerk or maybe are they well thought on moves by the bjp for instance giving the ticket to navin jindal at the last instance i had an interview with um, uh, bhupender hooda just a few hours before that and he was saying ki bhi humne navin jindal se baat ki thi because kurukshetra had gone to aam aadmi party he wasn't keen on contesting which of course is not correct as we found out अशोक चौहान सो बेसिकली जस्ट टू गेट सम कांड ऑफ फुट होल्ड इन मराठा वोट्स एंडर बीजेपी सक्सेसिफरेंट स्टोरी so medika gandhi contest and varun gandhi is benched varun gandhi yes. has no choice so you know this is a beauty of that entire script and there are a lot of iron fist is there see so many mps sitting mps mps who would have won very easily they all you know issued statements uh, yeah. just hours before the name was sort of you know dropped saying that you know they are taking uh, 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 this thing they are not doing uh, active politics etc voluntarily when we know these things are not voluntary at all so the bjp has a sense of purpose uh, you know game plan a design of course the list looks very whimsical but there is a method in everything see a lot of uh, mm-hmm. sitting uh, bjp mps in uttar pradesh have been you know retained because if they were not retained the caste equation would have gone here well and a lot of experiment is also taking place in other places you look at uh, bjp list of bengal well bjp has very little i mean to achieve in the sense that they just want to create more and more problem so i think each piece of on a bjp chess board has a as a role and move to play and that's where i feel kangana ranaut is very important she is there to unstabilize lot of this you know non political elites in bollywood elsewhere at all remember she is a popular actress and uh, she has a lot of shock value and she is the best part for the bjp she has a very simplistic way of looking mm-hmm. at history uh, what do you and- think uh, for un- uh, destabilize uh, non political elites uh, what is your uh, <laughs> hinting we, yeah, we all know that you know a uh, kangana is a is a is a is a you know modi's india new age you know woman uh, coming from a small tire uh, small town she had lot of problem with you know okay. johars and roshans and bachans and khans of you know bollywood that elisters now these all the elisters had lot of comfort zone now she is going to destabilize i will not be surprised priya that if she is made a you know junior minister also because as i said you know it's not like a you know congress choice of you know govinda or sunil that i think uh, you know kangana has been brought in with you know to bring some kind of you know shock value uh, in the bjp uh, so is she going to uh, play the role that smriti rani perhaps was playing i don't know it's going to no 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 i no i i think this they are two very different character uh, smriti it was lot more you know political uh, well grounded etc i think kangana is going to do a lot of hit job and hit job and shock value so these are the things we have to you know watch it for a lot of people are going to be in no trouble because the okay. bjp the team of this you know making things difficult for elite i think now bollywood is also going to come under a lot of glare and scrutiny so a uh, new lutians in bollywood also not just delhi uh, sandeep your take especially we can we lead with the kangana theory <laughs> yeah first of all you know one uh, comment uh, i heard someone say uh, today's situation is very funny all bjp politicians and leaders are uh, constantly looking at their phones praying that they get the call uh, to saying that they got the ticket whereas congress politicians are also looking at their phones hoping that they don't get that call <laughs> uh, because they know you know it's a, uh, going to be a totally lose lose oh, process and uh, so therefore you know kangana uh, i'll come to that in a minute i see this whole pattern uh, you know while ashutosh's theory i defer to his theory uh, with the counterintuitive it may sound that they may be uh, not be confident but irrespective of confidence or not confident uh, no confidence or no confidence bjp is moving in a very very strategic way to ensure winability okay so uh, i don't want to get into the numbers whether bjp can get 370 or 270 but they would like to ensure that even if they get 270 they have the best chances of getting 270 uh, than uh, lose a single seat uh, lower than what they can uh, get under the best circumstances so that's the approach secondly 
they are also playing pretty safe. You see, today, I don't know whether you've noticed, today morning, Dilip Ghosh got a warning letter for his I'm comment sorry. against Mamta Banerjee yesterday. And uh, this was, in, uh, you know, compared to what kind of comments are passed um, on election at election time, uh, this was relatively, you know, uh, uh, not so uh, uh, sharp, but still they immediately uh, um, pulled him down because they don't want to make the same mistakes as they did in 2021, uh, giving Mamta Banerjee, uh, uh, you know, that uh, local um, uh, pride. Victimhood. Yeah, victim pride, etc. So this is what they're doing as Rashid and you were citing all controversial characters being uh, denied tickets. Uh, new cat people getting tickets, and here I'll come and both with Rashid's point about Kangana. While you know we think on very very immediate terms, I think Narendra Modi and the today's BJP under him look far ahead on all fronts. Like he has already got a roadmap and a blueprint ready on the economic agenda. They are also having in their mind what they want to have the kind of uh, you know um, a composition of the Lok Sabha uh, for future because they are not even stopping at thinking of 2029. Uh, they want to look beyond, and so if they have to change the narrative on the reforms front, they are doing certain things, and uh, on the uh, blue economic blueprint for which they need the majority, but at the same time they cannot change the political narrative in the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha unless they get certain people of a certain profile and therefore also change the narrative by getting I people agree. who are younger, who speak in a different voice. BJP looks at succession planning. So while you know Congress is getting uh, uh, too uh, worried as to why a sitting MLA or MP has been denied a ticket, they are looking ahead. They are, and you see, there are also signals that people whom one thought were Cast by the wayside, Rajiv Prasad, Rudi, Ravi Shankar Prasad, uh, they have been brought back. So in BJP, it doesn't mean that if you are, um, uh, in, if you lose a ticket in one, um, uh, lose one, uh, you are uh, totally sidelined. The people are there. So there is a very different kind of working over there. And I mm -hmm. think they are playing safe. Uh, you know, to take Ashutosh's point of Ashok Chavan. Nitish Kumar and all that, they're just trying to ensure. See, uh, pra Prashant Kishore has said uh, that Bihar, BJP has never been able to win on its own. So they're very realistic about the whole thing. But once they get their numbers, even as NDA, thereafter what happens, uh, nobody can tell. Tomorrow Nitish's party get, uh, may get totally dissolved and all these fellows may come into BJP and BJP may be uh, totally, uh, uh, what will happen to Ashok Chauhan or even Eknath Shinde's party, nobody knows. So those are electoral scenarios. But today, they would like, in whichever way, uh, alliances, combinations, whatever, to get those numbers. And as one of our common friends, you know, Radhika Ramsheshan had told me, and I didn't believe her at that point in time. So Sandeep, uh, uh, you know, that time we were a little, this was much before the state assembly elections, and one was a little jittery. He said, don't worry, they are working on a clear plan of beating the Rajiv Gandhi record of, of um, 404 oh, or what. And uh, uh, that's what they seem to be doing. Uh, Ashutosh, uh, the BJP may be working to plug the loopholes. You said maybe they're not confident, but at least they've formed the leaks and the weak points and they're trying to plug them. That could be one way of looking at it. No, I, I, I didn't mean that the BJP is, uh, whenever I said the BJP is number, that doesn't mean that the BJP is... Uh, uh, is losing elections. I never said that. See, the, the, mm. the, point, the, the point of difference is that the BJP is facing 10 years anti-incumbency and no government, whether it is uh, led by Narendra Modi or anybody else, that facing 10 years anti-incumbency is always the most dangerous proportions. And uh, so, uh, having said that, my, my point is very simple. My point is that the BJP wants a third term come what may, whether through, uh, with the help of Ashok Chavan or with the help of Janardhan Edith, they are not bothered. And this BJP is is basically not a lot. Atal Bihari Vajpayee's BJP or the Lalki Sadwani's BJP with a sense of morality used to define their politics. Today, the sense of power defines their politics. So if they, if you want to have, uh, unless you've got 272, unless you've got a third term, um, uh, however morally right or wrong you might be, it will not make any difference. So that's how the BJP is moving in that direction. But the fact is that, uh, that, that this idea of having 370 seat and the 400 seat uh, you know, these are these are psychological warfares. Uh, mm. Everybody everybody indulges in. But today, BJP is 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 vulnerable. I'm saying this 
and not confident, that does not mean that they are not strategizing for the future. It, it's a party which, which is a modern party which believes into the into the robust feedback mechanism. So they must have got something from the ground that they need to tighten their belts. There are certain issues. And in between also, there is there is a there is a wheel within the wheel within the BJP this strategy. Like the dropping of Har Dr. Harshwadan a Chandni Chowk candidate who never lost an election. It 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 speaks volume that why he has been uh, been uh, been dropped and Ashok Chauhan has been brought in. Can Ashok Chauhan win a seat in Latul? No, he can't. Nandir, Nandir, can he win that? Last time he, he lost the election. And the BJ, and the Congress party did so badly in Maharashtra, despite Ashok Chauhan and Rishal Prathivirat Chauhan, despite all the top leaders of the BJP, uh, all the top leaders of the Congress party. So uh, what I'm saying is that the BJP is smart, there's no doubt about it. BJP is a modern party, there's no doubt about it. But at times you realize that, uh, that, the, 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 that the BJP has a very limited geographical reach. Hmm. At least 130 seats in the South India, or uh, uh, including Punjab and other places, they are almost blank. See, uh, the Akali Dal has broken an alliance with them. Navin Patnaik has broken an alliance with them, and these are the two alliances which are supposed to be to, to be done. But why Navin? Because because they were trying to arm to uh, Navin Patnaik and wanted him to get more Lok Sabha seats. And in fact, Odisha is a state where if the BJP plays well. There is a possibility that after Navin Patnaik, they will be forming the government. So keeping and having an alliance with Navin Patnaik over there was beyond my comprehension. And it and unless you wanted, unless you there is something wrong somewhere. So at the one point of time you are conceding seats to Nitish Kumar. At the other point you want to arm to Navin Patnaik through Pandian uh, to mm. get more seats for the Lok Sabha. These are the two contradictory things. I think we have to understand that. I'm 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 not under. I'm not underestimating BJP, but I'm also not under underestimating uh, the, the the people's anger and the and the, and the uh, dejection uh, for the last ten years of, of the BJP's rule. Where what has it delivered? Look, the 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 uh, the, the Maldives have uh, have gone to the extent of throwing our 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 soldiers. If our foreign policy has been so robust, Germany would not have been commenting on us. The, the America would not have been commenting on us. The China would not have entered inside us. And then Nepal is not too friendly with India. The Sri Lanka is not too friendly with India. Pakistan, forget about the Pakistan. So I'm saying these are the perception created uh, by by the by the rumor mills, and we they want us to believe that they are getting 400. So I'm sorry, it is not a reality. And their first priority is to get 272. Come what may. Fair enough. And there are states like Punjab and Orissa, as, apart from the south, as Ashutosh has pointed out, Rashid, where the BJP is on a weak wicket. I mean, I was speaking to the Akali Dal and they were very clear that, uh, you know, the alliance suits, not having an alliance suits them, BJP is not going to win, their fight is actually going to be with the Congress, not even the Amadni Party. Which brings me to the other question. I'm going to ask Ashutosh this last, but I want first your reactions. On this KGWAL's arrest, Rashid, do you think uh, it is going to impact the narrative, election narrative? Uh, as a student of Indian history, contemporary politics, I look at it as a sort of, you know, opportunity and advantage for Mr. Arvind Kejriwal. If he is indeed sacked because he's trying to, you know, function from uh, uh, from jail and there is a lot of, you know, legal hurdles and administrative problems and all are there, if the BJP in its wisdom, the government of India, you know, removes him, sacks him, or, uh, you know, uh, kind of... Uh, uh, Delhi under some kind of president would etc. That is going to create a lot of problem and sympathy. Look at the Indian voter. Indian voter is also very you know whimsical. Look, uh, when we are talking about Himachal and Kangana is contesting Mandi, there was a great you know leader there called Pandit Sukram who was who had done a huge telecom scam. He was in jail, but when right. he came out of jail, I mean, when he was in jail when he came out of on bail, he won from Mandi with a huge you know margin. And so and Sukram not only. Uh, you know, one once but twice, and then his son won. So it does every time Jalita went to jail, she came out stronger. The same can be said more or less about Mr. Lalu Yadav also that it did not adversely impact either the RJD or him him being involved in this uh, 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 that uh, uh, fodder scam. So this uh, it may happen, it may not happen, but my assessment is that if Kejriwal is indeed sacked then mm -hmm. there will be an element of sympathy, how it will play out or not. One last point, Priya, that you were talking about, Odisha and Punjab, etc. The key thing we need to remember, it is the opposition, the India alliance is gaining very little. Because in no matter what happens in Odisha, how many seats, you know, BJD gets, how many seats BJP gets, it's not, not a single seat is coming in India alliance kitty. And Punjab also, because the you know, parties are uh, different, 
So it is not going to, you know, uh, hugely That's benefit. The this, mm. is the, this is the point, the point I'm saying. And the, the, you know, the chessboard BGP is very sure for trade. They, of course, they want to take the advantage BGP. If it's not advantage BGP and DA, then at least it should not be advantage uh, India Alliance or Congress. That is the bottom line. Good point. Uh, Sandeep, your take on the Kejriwal factor and if you want to, you know, come in on this, uh, the other point that Ashutosh had point. See, the Kejriwal factor, I see it in two parts. Uh, one is specifically Kejriwal where he can benefit. Uh, given the, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, assumptions and all the factors which I see it and it said, Kejriwal's benefit would be limited to Delhi. But in Delhi, there is the other contradiction. He can benefit in Delhi only if Congress supports him. But Congress is totally divided. There is a huge dissonance within Congress. Congress won't allow him to uh, walk away with Delhi uh, on this plea for a larger national cause. And uh, so how much of uh, you know Congress and uh, BJP will play this out? All the statements of all Congress spokespersons, Ajay Markin didn't go there, all of that to say that till yesterday you were calling him a thief and today you are suddenly uh, trying to defend him. And, you know, if this was the state election, it would have been different. But in the Lok Sabha election, I don't know how much they'd be able to capitalize. Outside of Delhi, will mm. the whole factor have an impact on the uh, India alliance? Will the India alliance be able to leverage it with the narrative that, you know, democracy is being crushed, this is happening, that is happening? Uh, I, I, I'm not too sure. Because that will depend on a variety of other factors. So you will get a lot of uh, you know um, uh, uh, noise on television and um, uh, on youtube etc about what's happening uh, and you know in delhi getting crushed kejriwal is also very good at grabbing headlines but in terms of bottom line uh, what turns out i have my doubts and bjp would have certainly weighed uh, you know these are very very um, high stake moves if they have played it uh, they will and so you might find other linkages coming like people are saying kavita turning approver and there's mm. some staging in um, uh, uh, Telangana or other stuff. Yeah, uh, there may be some surprises in store out there. Uh, okay. Uh, Ashutosh, uh, last word to you on the Kejriwal arrest. Do you think it will impact uh, anybody else other than the Ahmadmi Party? Can the Ahmadmi Party sustain uh, Kejriwal being in jail? Will it implode and the impact on the India Alliance? I don't know if the, if the, if the Ahmadi Party will implode, but Ahmadi Party will certainly find it very difficult to sustain itself because Ahmadi Party uh, is a party which uh, whose leaders uh, have never been have never worked without uh, or in, in absence of Arvind Kejriwal in the last since the Ahmadi Party has been formed. See today, today this is this is the greatest test and this is the existential crisis. But what I want to say about the in 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 the context of whether it will get, get sympathy or not. See, mm. I know Arvind Kejriwal well. Then I can tell you that Arvind Kejriwal is not focusing on the parliamentary elections come what may. His focus is the assembly elections six months down the line after the parliamentary elections. So he knows that uh, in, in Delhi, despite getting 67 seats and 62 seats, he has not been able to win a single seat in 2014 and 2019. Anyway, in Punjab, the parliamentary elections, uh, they, they lost badly in 2019. They got only one seat, that too, up Sangru, uh, up, 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 Simra, up, up Man, up Bhagwant Man, the chief minister, see, which they lost in a subsequent election within two months of getting a max, uh, the majority seats in, in, in assembly. So he knows that the assembly, the parliament election, parliament election is a basically his Achilles heel. But assembly election, he doesn't want to hear. The second point, which is important, is that Arvind Kejriwal wants his uh, his governments to be sacked because he is wary of any other leader taking reins of the Ahmadi Party and then uh, losing control. He is a control freak. He he will not want con uh, control of the party or the government to be given to somebody else. I I know for sure because he has been. Uh, quite uh, he 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 very reluctantly has uh, has given uh, Punjab to Bhagwant Man. Very reluctantly he has given that. He never wanted him to be the chief minister in that sense. But the fact today is that he is inside the jail. There is nobody outside who can control who can who can run the party. So Sanjay Singh and Manish Sisodia would have been an excellent choice. But no, uh, if. Manis had been there, probably he would have uh, risk uh, giving him, him the rain. But uh, but today, you know, uh, uh, what I see is that uh, uh, there's a tug of war between Arvind Kejriwal and the Modi government. And who blinks first is the most important thing. Whether the Modi government goes and invokes Article 356 and sacks or Arvind Kejriwal resigns. 
if uh, I I don't think he's going to resign. If uh, if he had to resign, he wouldn't have uh, said that I'm leaving the government from the from from here. So another two three days is going to be very very interesting. And because the Modi government has to answer the question that how how can you let a chief minister who has not resigned to run the government from the jail? And for this, our the BJP will not have any answer. Okay. On that note, we can see Arvind Kejriwal is fighting the Delhi election. BJP is fighting the 2029 election. And I don't know what election the Congress is fighting or if it's fighting at all. But thank you so much for this conversation. We are going to watch this space and see what happens next. But thank you for now. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon.